you guys do some incense hey everyone hey Shelly how are you guys hey Charles how are you hello 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 how is everybody today are we good wait a few minutes um we are going to talk about coping with emotional trauma during the holidays and um, that is what we're talking about today um if you're new in here i do thank you <laughs> um if you're new in here i on wednesdays we call it work at wednesday it is actually just a day for us to come together and kind of learn maybe learn something about yourself help you through some different things stuff like that I am good, Phoenix. I hope you're well. Hey, Tubby. Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> hey, Crystal. Um, hello, guys. Oh, yeah. No worries. No worries, guys. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Hey, Bloodline. Hey, Lone Wolf. I'm going to welcome everybody in for a minute. Hey, Julie. Um, for those of you that um, are in the group, you already know about it. There are some people that are already in the group. Um, if you do Black Friday shopping, I've started a group called, um, gosh, I can't even remember what it's called. Does anybody know? Black, Black Friday with Kitty. Uh, it's a group over on Facebook. If you go find me on Facebook, you can find this group. And... I have some really great deals in it. I'm just putting it in that group so I'm not bombarding everybody with tons and tons of deals until uh, until I do the sale on Friday night. So the stuff that's in there is in there. It is there till it's gone. I think it's Black Friday with Kitty, I believe. Uh, it is a Facebook group. So if you can't find it, come over to my Facebook and say, hey, where's your group? Um, I can invite you over or if, if you're interested. Um, um, so Netlin, Craft by Kitty Lynn is my name across all social media. This is just a special um, group that I made for the Black Friday shopping. It's Black Friday with Kitty. Um, but if you go to my um, Craft by Kitty Lynn uh, just on Facebook, it's, it's just Craft by Kitty Lynn, then I can make sure and invite you over. Hide the flame for your box. So, um, thank you, Avron. Black Friday with Kitty, um, and it's over on Facebook. It's a group. There's not thousands of people in it. It's made specifically for you guys that follow me and support me always. It's a way for me to give back on super cheap deals without having to be on um, say TikTok or other places where other people are going to jump in. So it's special deals that you're going to only get there. Like literally Friday, it'll be more expensive on TikTok. <laughs> it, it won't be the same. Um, so anyway, um, tonight we are going to talk about coping with trauma during the holidays. Okay. Holidays, holidays, holidays. It is a joy. It is a disaster. It's I don't know anyone that has a amazing, smooth holiday every single year, right? So rather that be our family that we grew up with, rather it be the family that brothers and sisters, rather it be our aunts and uncles, rather it be we don't have anybody, that's a whole separate trauma too, right? It is hard on everyone. And when I say that, those of you that follow me know I lost a brother um, several years ago within the past 10 years. My family's not been the same without since, you know, it's not the same. Things change, right? And then you get around each other and there's that trauma, there's that something's missing. It's very hard sometimes. And sometimes you, you just don't even have the same family, right? Because everybody processes trauma differently. Hey, Orlin. And so for me, 
you know, I, I have several, several brothers. I'm the oldest. I have several brothers and we don't usually get together. And when we do, it's kind of uncomfortable because the last time we were truly all together was not for such a great situation. And so um, this year we're going to try to do something between Thanksgiving and Christmas at an arcade or something like that. So all the kids in the family can get together. Um, trauma is a very real thing at the holidays, right? Everybody paints these pictures that these holidays are so amazing, and they are, right? And they are. But getting through things that hurt are difficult, and sometimes we can't move through that quite as quickly as we would like, right? Sometimes you're at a dinner, and there's someone there that has hurt you. There is someone there that has done something to you that you cannot forgive. There are people there that act ways... You, you, you look for the first opportunity to leave. Ask me how I know, right? Um, and the best knowledge I can say to you on that is enjoy the people that are there that you do want to see. Okay? Because there are triggers. There are things that happen that spiral you out. Sometimes your blood family is a disgusting mess that you do not even want to be associated with. And I full on understand that. There are people in my family that I feel like had ruined my family, right? And then I turn around and look and I'm like, well, yes, but he probably obviously has tons of trauma, right? You start looking at people as people and it's really discouraging sometimes, right? So that's why I feel like I'm here to help people heal and be better people, right? Yeah, life is not a Hallmark movie. It can be, right? You just have to have some serious, serious uh, training to be able to see everything good because not everything is good, right? There's that balance of it. So holidays are amongst us, right? Christmas is coming. Holidays are coming. The monsters that are family are coming. The people we love ever so much and don't get to see so much are all. Um, my kids have COVID, so I don't even get to see my grandbabies tomorrow. Um, they just found out today, the whole family, including my son and daughter-in-law, they all have COVID. And so I don't get to see them. So it'll be weird for me not seeing my babies. But that's the family I do want to see, you know. But... um. So I'm going to read some of these notes, but no, yeah, no, if you don't have family, I very well may be on here, right? Hanging out with you guys. Um, some people don't have family, right? And some people that do have family feel like they don't have family. Sometimes you're truly by yourself sitting in an apartment wanting to know, like, what are you supposed to do if it's just you, right? And there are things that you can do. It doesn't make it easy. Hey, Richard. Yeah, some some people truly don't. And it's um it 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 gets very very hard sometimes because so many people put so much focus on holidays. And while I I do love the holidays and I love family, I also don't feel like we should treat people differently just because it's a holiday. Right? Don't don't treat me different just because it's a holiday. Um I, I can't get behind treating someone amazing on a holiday and then never speaking to them the whole year. It's so crazy. But that's just me, right? There are so many people that have the exact same situation. So you guys are not alone. And please don't feel like you are, even though it'll feel like it for a moment. Like, know that you're not alone. There are so many people that are going through similar situations. So I'm just going to kind of read from some of my notes. Holidays are supposed to be a joyous and happiest occasion, but for many, it's a time of overwhelming stress. What kind of stresses do you guys have at the holidays? I know some is like seeing a family you don't want to see, having to buy presents if you don't have money, and then not wanting to see people if you can't buy presents because there's such a precedence on you need to spend money on everyone. Hey, Lone Wolf. Um, the stress of getting to places, getting here, doing this, separating time, you know, all these different things. We overextend ourselves emotionally and physically. And at this time, we have a strong desire for belonging and connecting with others, right? Because that's what's painted. That is what's painted. 
you you need to find where you need to go for the holidays. What are you going to do for Christmas? What are you going to do, right? So we overextend ourselves emotionally and physically with a strong desire of belonging and connecting with others. For many of us, getting together with our families and friends brings us joy and happiness. However, for others, it's the hardest time of the year as it reminds us of an extremely stressful or disturbing event where we felt hopeless and emotionally out of control. Traumatized. It's the time of year that can trigger all sorts of complicated feelings, memories, and anxieties. Trauma happens to everyone, and if not resolved, can have detrimental effects on an individual and your relationships. While holidays bring bright spots for many of us, it can bring unique struggles and undeniably faced by trauma survivors as they go out to meet their family and friends that were once a source of the psychological trauma. They were unsupportive or they were toxic or they did not value your mental or personal well-being. For many survivors of emotional trauma, holidays may represent anniversaries and reminders of past hurt and traumatic experiences. For those individuals, even a slight prospect of visiting friends or family can bring up feelings of shame, sadness, fear, dread, leaving them trapped or unable to cope. Does that resonate with anyone? Does that resonate? You get together and all of a sudden there's these feelings. It's like, who's going to leave first? Watching to see who leaves first. Me and my brothers joke about that. Right? We all joke about it laughingly, but we know that we're all looking for the time that we can go ahead and leave, right? Because it can be painful to just be in the presence of something, especially when other people haven't healed and, and you know them seeing you may be a site of, of pain for them. So it's, it's definitely an interesting dynamic. Um, for individuals, that even the slight prospect of visiting friends and family can bring up feelings of shame, fear, dread, leaving, feeling trapped or unable to cope. Emotional and psychological trauma is painful, even without any physical in injury. Part of the reason that it is is then visible to others and it's difficult to share, right? We think we're by ourselves because we can't physically see how bad we're hurting when we go and we visit and have that. It's not just you, right? It's not just you. It feels like it because you're walking around feeling like your arm has been chopped off at the shoulder, but you you think that you're the only one in the family feeling it, and chances are you're not. It's invisible to others and very difficult to talk about. Many have different trauma histories involving triggers and varying levels of responses as well as stages in recovery. It's important to know that although emotional injuries will not just go away, healing from trauma is possible. Although it may take days, months, or even years, know that you're not alone. Know that you're not alone. Recognizing signs and triggers of emotional trauma can be helpful for you to take control over your responses in the present moment when your whole body and mind go into overdrive. When your whole mind and body go into overdrive. What is emotional trauma, right? The T word, trauma, the T word, trigger. There's a lot of words like that, right? But they are very real in our lives, whether we like to discuss it or not. Emotional trauma. Trauma is an incredibly interpersonal and does not discriminate based on gender, social class, race, sexual orientation, age, culture, religion. In every family or relationship that we form as adults, there's a heightened risk of experiencing strong emotional, cognitive, physical, and psychological reactions from trauma that the other person has had as well as your own. Whether you suffered childhood abuse, were in an abusive romantic relationship, you were in a divorce, you bear witness to a horrific event, you're a prisoner of war, that's a lot of trauma, um, or have experienced workplace bullying, the effects of psychological trauma can last a lifetime right? That's why it's so important to invest in yourself and self-love and healing. Emotional and psychological trauma is defined as damage to the psyche, to your mind, that occurs as a result of a distressing event. 
These events are often perceived as life-threatening over which you have no control over, as if you're trapped without any means of escaping. When you experience intense, painful, emotional events, all areas of your life are negatively impacted, often leading to development of depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, injury, addictions, phobias, social and relational problems. This might leave you with emotional scars, often feeling emotionally exhausted and isolated. It is important here that two components of your experience of trauma, your subjective and your objective knowledge of the event. The more you believe that you or the life of the other is at risk, the more traumatized you will be. It is without any doubt that trauma is psychologically overwhelming, causing strong emotions and the feeling of helplessness. However, the details or the meaning of an event that is most distressing for you will not necessarily be the same for others. Trauma comes in many forms. I have some friends that have been through um, some, some trauma and they're sometimes scared to bring it up because it, for them, they don't think that it was really that traumatizing. And maybe coming from someone who has had a lot of things that were very, very traumatizing, they feel guilty or shame for even thinking that that could cause trauma. Everybody's trauma is different. Someone could really and truly really and truly feel something that you may deem is not that big of a deal. And it may have unlocked certain things in their brain and in their psyche, just like something that happened to you. And just because you don't deem it as being something that is a big deal, it, it it's it's just the way that it works, right? So it's time that we stop judging others that have been through trauma on judging if something's small or if something's big, okay? Sometimes people can't remember their trauma. Sometimes they remember every detail. Sometimes it's not anything big, while as some of us have been holding hands to someone who have passed away that we didn't want to let go of. There's so many different ways. It does not negate how it affects you, okay? It doesn't because we're all built so differently. So think about that as you're discussing and learning about other people's trauma, something that is very big for someone else may be very small to you and vice versa. It comes in many forms and is experienced differently by each individual according to your makeup, your your genetic makeup, your um, everything that you have going on within you can affect how you react with trauma, okay? Hey there. You may experience emotional trauma if, think about these things. If you had trauma that you were unprepared for, that is the sense really what trauma is. Trauma comes in, jerks everything out from under you and you fall face first and you're like, holy hell, what just happened? Right? And it could be someone lied to you. It could be something huge. It could be something small, but nonetheless, it's trauma because you thought something was one way. And then all of a sudden it's not, it affects you. You know, you have to learn to heal through those things. If you were unprepared for it, if it was something that happened that was out of your control, if you felt powerless to prevent the event, if you have experienced the event repeatedly, if it was cruel, if it happened during your childhood, and these are just some of the ways that you can experience emotional trauma. Traumatic events might be related to your loved one's physical or mental health, past traumatic experiences, coping skills, personality traits, social and emotional support at the time of the event, or specific stressful or horrific situations. Oh, Max mom, I bet, I bet it was. Yeah, I bet that affects you in a huge way. Childhood trauma can be caused from some of these things. See if this resonates with anyone. Growing up in an unstable or unsafe home environment, right? When you grow up in an unstable or unsafe home environment, there's a lot of things that can happen. A lot of times you like to be in control as an adult. And when you give up that control, you're terrified someone's going to hurt you because you're in control of this environment, right? Growing up in an unstable or unsafe home environment, being separated from or abandoned by a parent or a caregiver, 
Basic needs of food and shelter and clothing were not met. If you had food and shelter and clothing and those needs were met, there may be someone that has not had that met at all. And that's not negating the trauma that you've went through, right? So you have to acknowledge everyone's feelings on their trauma and understand it can all affect everyone in such different ways. Experiencing serious illness or intrusive medical procedures. Sounds like someone in here. If you are seriously ill, that can affect everything from the smell to, oh my gosh, does that hurt again, to so many different things. And I'm sure, Max Mom, I, I would bet that you would have a lot of information to talk about on that. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that I'm talking about? If you had sexual, physical, or verbal abuse in your childhood or any time in your life, domestic violence, if you were around any unaliving, and neglect. And these are just some of the things, right? Just some of the things. If your trauma happened years ago, know that there are steps you can take to recover from past emotional trauma, injuries, and hurts by learning how to trust and connect with others and reclaiming your emotional balance by making new memories to help counteract and uh, retrain your brain on something positive with some of those things. Reactions to traumatic ordeals often may include cognitive and behavioral responses. You may experience intrusive thoughts, have images of the event flashing in your mind, hear hurtful or painful messages, a loss of memory, sense of disorientation, confusion, ability to focus on task. You may experience changes in your mood behavior, such as avoiding places or things or activities or people reminding you of the event. Social and family events may no longer bring pleasure and joy. Hence, you may feel a need to isolate and withdraw to avoid overwhelming emotions. To cope with the aftermath of tormenting and overwhelming events, humans process the natural response to protect yourself from harm. Hey there. You want to protect yourself from harm. Not even you in your brain, like you're thinking right this second. Your psyche, right? Your psyche knows, oh, hell no, get out of there. Nope. Mm -mm. Remember last time? That's so, it's, it's also self-sabotaging because we do it so easily because we're not really in control of it until we know, right? Until we know that's what we're doing. To cope with the aftermath of tormenting and overwhelming events, humans possess an innate and natural response to protect yourself from harm. You too have developed many coping strategies to avoid emotions, to shield yourself from dangerous situations. As some of these may cause further struggles. Know that there are people around you in this group. In this group, I don't know about the people you have around you specifically, but I promise you, if you need a friend, there are people right here in this group, friend every single one of them. And all the people that are in here will be here for you. Okay, we've all had some sort of a trauma, and I promise that you can find someone that can be there for you in your time of need. You're so welcome. So, ways to cope with emotional trauma. So, we have a lot of addiction in my family. There's a lot of, um, my brother passed away from drugs. Um, I have a lot of family members that are involved with alcohol and drugs and things like that. And um, that getting together was always really crazy because you're like, what's going to happen now? It's Jerry Springer. And we joke about it, right? We joke about it because it's better to joke than like cry about it because that's what happens. And, um, you know, talking with my brothers as adults, the ones that we do, that we do correspond um, you know, we have to find neutral places. We have to have boundaries, right? And so we've decided to do a family event at a neutral place so people can come and go. And it's a big area. That way, um, we don't have to stand and talk and hang out and hug people that we're not comfortable doing, yet we all get to see each other, right? And so it is very, very, your brother was an addict. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 
it's so interesting, the dynamic, when you truly sit back and think about it. We don't because we're like, oh gosh, I have to go to mom's here at this time. Then I have to do this. And then I go home and then I actually haven't even enjoyed my day. It was way worse. Um, it was way worse. So um, some ways to cope with emotional trauma during the holidays, during any time, right? But during the holidays, especially having a support system. Like I said, these people that are in here, if you message them because you need something, they're not going to turn you away. Okay, they're, they're just not going to. I know most, most everybody in here, amazing people. Amazing people, normal people, have trauma, trying to be the best version of themselves that they can be, which is great. That's where we all should be going, right? Having a support system in place before the holidays is a vital step in helping you deal with strong emotions. You cannot control your past trauma. You cannot control what's happened to you in the past. You can't. You can't take control by planning to have someone to talk to while visiting with your family or friends, or if you're spending your family alone, have a plan of action in place. Have a plan of action in place. Become friends with everyone in here. When you're with your family and you're about to break down because you can't be there, message someone, have a plan in place, okay? Have a plan in place. Acknowledge that reaching out for help is not an act of weakness. It is a strength. Then assemble a list of people in your life that you can rely on in a moment of need. They need, may need to be your close friend who listens to you or a family member who understands. You need to have your feelings validated. Validated for your mental and personal well-being. Plan to connect with them before the holiday gathering. Just for five minutes or via text. If you have a therapist, you can do that as well, but you can do all the same with having someone there. Then you don't feel like you're there alone. You have someone to call and be like, oh my gosh, you won't believe what just happened. I knew this was going to happen. I'm so glad I had you to talk to you, right? It's, it's very real. Um, hang on a minute. Plug my phone in. So if you're going somewhere tomorrow and you need someone, reach out. Make friends with people in this chat right now if you're not, okay? If you need a place to go, there's Craft by Kitty Lynn over there. There's Blend Your Spirit on Facebook. It is a group of people that are focused on becoming the best version of themselves. And if that means being there for you when you need a text and a little, you can do this, we will do that. Remember that you have a choice so many things that we do in life, we do because of other people's expectations on us. You don't have to go to that birthday. They may talk bad about you. They may bitch about it. You don't have to. You don't have to. Remember that you have a choice not to attend. And you don't have to explain yourself why. There are family members that will try and push that. My mother is one of those. You have the right to decide what is best for your spiritual and mental and physical well-being. You and only you. Ah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You have a good day too. You have the right to decide not to attend a holiday gathering without explaining to everyone in the world why. If you believe that you will feel unsafe, you can set boundaries for yourself on what to do. You have the right to say no to change your mind or make choices that are right for you. You do. If you still live with toxic people, this presents different challenges. As saying no one can bring more harm to you, they're still literally right there with you. But you have to take control. Hi, happy Thanksgiving to you, dear. Take control of your choices. You know what you can what you can handle. You do. Shelly, you know what you can handle. If they say no, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. Right? Not until you're ready. And sometimes you're not ready. Ever. Right? There are unhealthy ways of coping. It is very common to develop various coping mechanisms to numb your pain and emotion. 
They can all be extremely harmful to your psychological and physical well-being. Developing healthy strategies can be profoundly empowering. Remember, alcohol is highly intoxicating, guys. As much as we love to do that when we get with family, sometimes it can literally make it worse. Because all your inhibitions go away. <laughs> Choose healthier options. Rest well, eat well, stay hydrated. Don't forget to exercise. Talk to friends. Do something that makes you very happy. Sit in that car and play a song that revs you up and makes you happy before you go in for your 10 minutes that you have to go in to say hi. Right? You can do it. And if you can't, it's okay. Right? It's your choice because you're an adult. <laughs> You're an adult and you're looking out for yourself and you are making healthy boundaries on what is good for you. Nothing is more empowering than understanding what you will and you won't, won't deal with. Yes, absolutely, Tiny, we will. Yep. Choose healthier options. Simple walking and paying attention to your surroundings is an excellent method to take your mind away from the chaos. Walking outside. Hey, Tammy. When you lose someone, it's kind of hard to be happy even after you're... Oh, gosh. 100%. I understand that so much. I have a really hard time at the holidays. Um, my brother that I lost was the one that was just under me that we were closest in age. And like every year I make deviled eggs or I, um, make the vegetable tray. Like I look over and I see him like leaning over it, just stuffing his face and I miss it so much, you know, I miss it. Yeah. So I get it. I do. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Ask yourself, where are your toes? So I'm going to have some keychains made and some other small things for you guys. That way you can have them. That way a keychain, right? It's right there and you're flipping it around anyway. Where are your toes, right? When you feel yourself, you feel yourself starting your blood pressures going up. Like you feel the stress, you feel it. You feel the emotion building, building, building. Where are your toes? Ask yourself where are your toes? Now, Uncle... Jim Bob over there may be talking to you and you may be on planet, I'm in outer space looking for my toes, but where are your toes? They're right here on the carpet. I'm safe. I'm in control of myself. If I need to leave, I will leave. If you have to have a pep talk while asking yourself where your toes are, then by all means, yep, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah, words cut deeper than swords. Yeah. Oh, Tammy. So practice, 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 right? Maybe you won't be able to do it this year. Maybe next year you can, right? But when you're in a situation and it gets difficult and you're safe and you know that you're safe, you're just a little irritated because this is not for you. Where are your toes? Okay. Recognize what your triggers are. Recognize your triggers. It's important to recognize what your triggers are. They can range from the anniversary of an event, a song, a person, a smell, or a word. It can be anything that a trigger sensation of the original trauma prompting your body to, and mind to relieve, relive it. Okay? That's what you guys have to understand about triggers. Right? Right? Last week, I said triggers are an open door to a classroom for you guys to walk into and learn something about yourself. Be invested in learning about yourself. Why did you just flip shit when someone rolled their eyes at you? It's not because that person rolled their eyes at you. It's because someone else did something in the past that made you feel very small. And all of a sudden, you had to puff up and explode because of how that person back here made you feel, right? Triggers are open doors to classrooms where the subject is you. When those triggers come up, 
take a spiral with you or a notepad with you to your family gathering, okay? Use your notes on your phone. When something happens, someone says something, someone looks wrong and you feel the emotions start to emerge, write it down so we can discover where the point of pain started, right? Where did the point of pain start? Recognize your triggers. They can range from anniversary, event, song, person, smell, or word. Anything that can trigger a sensation of the original trauma prompting your body to start going into fight or flight mode. When you experience a trigger, your body reacts as if you were in danger. It is the natural response of your body and mind in the moment of a threat. That's sometimes why we explode randomly and it's not even a real reason. And people are like, what is wrong with you? And you're like, well, blah, 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 blah. It's how your body reacts. Fight or flight, baby. All right? Fight or flight. A lot of times in families and family events and holidays, when triggers happen, it results in a huge way of um, everybody getting upset and leaving just like the year before, right? You're just waiting for chaos to consume it. When you're not in real danger, know your body and mind react as if you were in the original ordeal. The original ordeal. It is an automatic response to all those cues around you that your body is picking up through your senses. However, if you're really in danger, then your natural reaction would be to get yourself out of the situation. Do that right? Do that if you're truly in danger and keep yourself safe. If you're in a position that's not actually life-threatening, but you experience triggers as if you're reliving a traumatic event, the best thing to do is acknowledge the triggers and soothe yourself. Walk to the kitchen and grab some tea. Go to the bathroom, <laughs> bite all your fingernails off, whatever you need to do, right? You just now understand that this is a trigger. It is your natural body's response to telling you you're in danger and you're not in danger anymore. And I'm not dismissing that because it's a natural response and it's very powerful. But your body recognizes that emotion that's generated. So it's fight or flight, right? So you either yell and scream and flip out you shut down, you might blow up and leave, you might say things that you really didn't mean to say as a way to get people away from you to keep you safe. If you're having feelings that are too, too much and you feel it's going to be too much, leave and find a safe place for you. You shut down. Yep. Yep. Wait for the storm to calm. But while you're waiting for those storms to calm, understand that the way your body is reacting right now potentially it isn't, it's not the same situation as it was before. Now, there are times that it is, but um, when you start reacting to something that someone else is doing, you tend to react from the initial point of trauma, right? And so you might go overboard on some things. Now I'm saying that's where you have to step away and understand what your limits are. You have to understand your boundaries. You have to understand that you don't have to be here. You want to be maybe. Maybe you want to be because of how it used to be or you want to be because you don't want people to be mad at you or you don't wanna fight with people or you don't wanna be made to feel like you're stupid or you're like the black sheep of the family. But when it's all said and done, you are your only advocate for you because you know you. If you can't handle it and you're not there, don't push yourself, right? Don't do it. Take control. <coughs> Let me get a drink. Take control of your reactions to triggers and keep yourself safe because you're worth it. Life is a process and emotions. They are changeable and every single year can be different for you as you go through a growing and healing process. If something goes wrong and you trip out, 
Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be sensitive. Be gentle. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Be kind to yourself. Remind yourself that in the present moment, you are the one that needs comfort most. In the present moment, you need your energy for you when you're overwhelmed. Be sensitive. Be gentle to yourself. Breathe. Take control. Make choices and make boundaries. If you are a survivor of any traumatic ordeal and you feel you can't move past your invisible wounds, that is time when you should probably seek going to a therapist. But at this point, many of us have already done that. There are so many people that have, and there is nothing wrong with wanting help to work through things. So um, that is my short and sweet yet very, very needed work at Wednesday. Know that you're not alone walking into family situations that may be less than stellar. Okay. Know that. When you're there and you're feeling something, ask yourself where are your toes. Sometimes we go into these situations already expecting the worst, right? Already expecting the worst. I mean, and I say that with the utmost love because me and my siblings, we go into it and we laugh a lot. And there's a lot of sarcasm. It is our coping mechanism through and through. Uh, we sometimes, unfortunately, will be like, who else, who's do you think we're going to have to next paste into the family picture? You know, we joke. And it's sometimes morbid jokes, but we joke to to cope, right? Because that's what we feel when we're together. We, we only remember that someone's missing, right? There were five of us, and now there's four, and I'm the oldest, and so they're all very still young. We're together, and someone's missing, right? Someone's missing. It hurts. It doesn't go away ever, right? It doesn't. Like I will look over cooking, looking for my brother, wishing he was here. Okay. That might make me tear up because it's sad, right? But there's also so many good things about the holidays, right? And so many good things about family. We have to learn to heal and work through the healing process so we can still enjoy life. So we can still enjoy it while we have it, right? Because someday we will be the ones that are gone, right? And someone will be wishing that we were standing over the cookies, right? Someone will wish we were still there, right? It's true. It's true. Yeah, I probably will. I probably will. He was a dumb jock. And he'd always be like, oh, I'm so hungry. I have to eat. I have to eat. Even though he was like 30, right? When, he, But he still, and he was diabetic, but he'd always be sneaking cookies, you know? And it's like <laughs> the funniest things we remember and miss. Okay? Heal and live your life knowing someday you're going to be the one people think about at the holidays, right? You're going to be the one. I wish she was still here. You would have loved her. Okay. <laughs> so don't feel like you're alone tomorrow. Happy birthday, Rose. Don't feel like you're alone tomorrow. Don't. If you need someone, like I said, go in here. Find some of these people. Amazing, amazing people. All have tragedy and trauma and all kinds of craziness. Right? They're not going to tell you you're stupid for not wanting to go chill out with your family who really has given you a whole bunch of trauma to work through. <laughs> it's like a never-ending gift. <laughs> So, yes, happy, happy birthday, Rose. So, 
I, I just wanted to walk through that. I will um, download this and post it over on, um, or post it up in craftbykittylynn.com under the uh, Work It Wednesdays. Um, that way you guys can rewatch it if you want to. Uh, tomorrow, if you get to where you need to stop and listen to something, it will be there for you, okay? If you need some coaching tomorrow, if you need something to watch, jump on my website, craftbykittylynn.com, go to Work It Wednesday. On, under the tab, Work It Wednesday, at the very top, there is a whole bunch of Work It Wednesday videos, okay? Do not, don't just sit and stew, okay? Yeah, let's write what we're thankful for. Guys, tell me what you're thankful for. What are you thankful for? Rose is thankful that she's one day older and deeper in debt. Yeah, don't go go there and watch that. It's free, you guys. It's stuff for you. Jump on there. Ah, thank you guys. Thank you, Julie. Kitty, my little loves. What else are you guys thankful for? I am so thankful for you guys, truly. Walking every morning. My children and granddaughter, my husband, thankful for my guys, thankful for Kitty and community. Oh, thank you, Shelly. My mama, kids, and my family. I love it. I love it. Aw, thank you. No worries. No worries, guys. So, if you get lonely tomorrow, yes, your mother walking another day. How's your mama? Your family? Good, good, good. <laughs> Shelly, your children woke up blessed. Yes, definitely. Good. I'm glad she's hanging in there. Good. So that being said, you're welcome. Don't let tomorrow pass you by for you to make a beautiful memory with someone. Even if it is just reaching out to some new friend you have in here. Okay. Don't live another day without making some sort of memory. Okay. It's not promised. Tomorrow's not promised. It's just not, not for anybody. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good. She had a few less. Perfect. We are sending you all kinds of love and light, my dear. So don't let tomorrow go without having some sort of memory. That's a good one. Even if it sucks, make a good memory. Be like, I'm a badass because I was dealing with this and I was thinking about where are my toes? Where are my toes? Where are my toes? And family was all griping and I'm like, where are my toes? That's a good memory, right? That's a great learning moment. Um, if you guys are not over in the group, um, before I jump off of here, um, in the group, Craft by Kitty Lynn across all social media, um, I uh, Instagram, Facebook, there is a group on Facebook called Black Friday with Kitty. There is a lot of specials on there. Things are very inexpensive. I'm starting Kitty Bucks. I'm waiting for my cards to get in and the and the way to track it, but right now I can track it manually. So for every $50 that you spend with me, you're gonna get a $10 Kitty Buck to spend on your next, next purchase. There are some exclusions, right? Not um, scoops, not things like that. And I will have actual cards that I'll send out to you so you guys have a number that you can tell me and I can fill it in so I can keep track of them, okay? So Kitty Bucks is in the works. It's a trial type thing till the end of December when I actually get the real ones in. So I'm gonna see how it will work. But every $50 you spend with me from now till the end of December, you get $10 to spend on your next purchase. Um, invite people over to um, Black Friday with Kitty. If anybody makes a $50 purchase, that is because of you, you get $10. Okay, you get $10 towards your next purchase. Um, Friday, What's Friday, guys? Friday is, it is, it is the Nightmare Before Christmas Scoops. Scoop day. So that is Friday. Um, 
scoop day, I will have sales as well. I will probably have grab bags too. Um, and after this, I'm getting ready to sit down and ship out a bunch more orders from you guys. But Friday night is Nightmare Before Christmas scoops. Um, uh, I have so many really fun things in there. Truly. I have, um, some little, uh, all, all different kinds of stuff. I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know. So many things. So lots of fun things. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you will get crystals in it. You will get a Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. Um, it will be a lot of fun. I am going to start having some scoops within my store. So if you want them, you can just let me know because I've had so much interest with some of them. Um, yeah, so um, that's kind of where that's at. I will download this as soon as it downloads on TikTok and throw it over there. Um, if you're interested and you need to do Christmas shopping, by all means, jump over into my group Black, Black Friday with Kitty. I promise you there's really good deals in there. Um, cause usually I have them, but they're even cheaper in there right now. <laughs> um, so that's kind of what I'm doing Friday night. We will do scoops after scoops. I will do probably a good hour's worth of a sales. Um, yeah, give me ideas for scoops. Absolutely. I am down for ideas for scoops. I know someone said they want to do, um, frozen me. That would be like a winter wonderland type theme. Um, yeah. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, you know where to find me. Um, I did get garnet in for everyone who was asking. I did get some garnet in. Yes. You said more Disney fairy scoops. Oh yes. I love it. Zodiac scoops, rose scoops. Oh, you're at the flu. I am so sorry you have the flu. There's a lot going on right now. You'll donate the snow. <laughs> you probably have a lot of snow. <laughs> yeah, I did get Garnet in. Um, for those of you that were asking, um, next week I am getting another huge box in. Um, and like I said, don't, don't feel pressure like... I, I do this because I love it. And um, if you can't buy, don't feel like you can't come into the lives. Like you guys come into the lives and hang out. Don't feel like you have to buy something to be there. I love it when you guys come in and hang out. Um, I have this beautiful new stone coming called Unicorn Stone. And it's Lepidolite, Smoky Quartz, and a couple of other things together. And it's so pretty. It looks like Unicorn Land. Frozen scoops, Harry Potter scoops. That would be fun. Yeah, so I have um, tons of tumbles coming finally. Finally, finally, finally. But the unicorn stone is beautiful and it's palm stones. And it's like light pink, white, shimmery, dark purple. It's really beautiful. So I'm very excited to... Uh, yes, I sent Nicole a picture of it. It's beautiful. Unicorn stone, yep. Yeah. And it doesn't obviously look like the shape of a unicorn, but it's like cotton candy. It's, it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's really pretty. So um, anyway, if you guys need me, you know where to find me. I'm putting together the scoop stuff probably tonight and I'm shipping out the rest of the orders that I have. If you did, let me know that you claim something in the Black Shopping Friday, Black Friday with Kitty. I'm just going to do open boxes until Friday for those if you guys are okay with it unless you want me to go ahead and close it and invoice you. But um, if you want to keep the box open, I will just pull the stuff for you. And then when you're ready, I will close the box. So just tell me, otherwise I'll close it on Friday. Sunday, Sunday, sorry, Sunday. So. Um, Garnet is good, Nicole, for so many things. Um, it is good for a lot of root work, a lot of inspiring sexual energy, but it's also really good for grounding. It's good for empowering you and confidence. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's good for root work. Um, it is good for um, gentle, like loving energy as well. It has both protection and it has healing and love. And the reason why I think it's so good at protection, and a lot of people don't talk about this, is because when you love, 
yourself and you value yourself, it's like your shield, your bubble, you, you're you protected because you're confident in that. And Garnet can help you with that. Um, you can meditate with it. You could just set it by you, however you work with your crystals. But um, I love it as a protection stone because it supports you to be badass, right? And, um, oh gosh, Nicole, that's so hard. Especially being a mama on it. Ugh. Yeah, I have, I'll shoot you some pictures because there's different sizes and stuff like that. And see which one you like. Yeah, bless her heart. That's rough. That's hard. So, um, also, um, sometime this weekend, it'll probably be Saturday, I'm going to do subscriber night again. Um, I don't know if it'll be crystal reads or oracle cards, but I will make sure and post for that for you guys Saturday or Sunday just to get back to you guys. I'm going to try to do it once a month on that. Um, but other than that, I will um, be around and I will post um, all kinds of things because I'm trying to get rid of a lot of things that I have extra of. Um, so I'll do some deals on um, Black Friday with Kitty. So I hope you guys have an amazing night. Have a great holiday tomorrow. I will probably jump on at some point tomorrow, even if it's just packing boxes. Um, because my kids have COVID, so me and my me and Chris will be home by ourselves. Uh, Advents will go out on Monday. I'm finishing up those um, Advents, so if you want an Advent calendar slash box, it's 24 baggies with something different on each one, and it's $60. Yeah. Good night, guys. I will talk to you very soon. Have a beautiful holiday, and I will see you sometime tomorrow. Bye.